Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we have another one of our 12 Battles of Christmas, where we are playing again in 1100 AD mod for Rome Total War. Two. This time again playing against BokBG, one of the lead mods for 1100 AD, and we are representing at least as close as we can do to where we're from today in this battle. So I am using the Kingdom of England, Bok is using the Principality of Kiev, and a heavyweight battle will ensue on these grassy plains out here. But first things first, let's have a look at our army compositions. And we have our English longbowman here, one of the strongest archers in the game. Very strong archer unit indeed. Are they going to be able to do much damage today? Along with them, we have a uh, front line of British spearmen. Pretty much all British spearmen down this front line, ready to hold the enemy while in the flanks, we have our English heavy axemen on our left flank. And on our right flank, we have our noble swordsmen. Very strong flanking units there indeed. As well as in the back, we have some lancers uh, on both sides, uh, I believe. Or maybe just one set of lancers and then another set of the noble hors horsemen as our general there. Very strong indeed uh, as an army. But we are going up against a heavyweight over here. Now, on his left flank, Bok has Russian mailed horsemen. Some armoured horsemen there, ready to swoop around our flanks. As well as on the other side, we have some more Russian mailed horsemen and some boyars, which I believe is his general, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, some boyars, some very strong armoured cavalry with their axes and maces there, ready to crush our armour. Uh, in his front line, he does have some Slavic skirmishers, as well as some Russian armoured archers, some heavily armoured archer units there, some decent archer units as well. Along the back, we have our Russian long, anx long axes, some strong units, again, some armour there with their axes, as well as the shields on their back. And then on the flanks, we have the dismounted Druzina. Very nice unit indeed. This actually might be the general. I can't quite remember. We'll see when we get into the battle. Very strong unit, this one indeed. Look at that. And they look stunning as well. Very nice to see. And then we also have some more dismounted Drazina on the other flank. So pretty evenly matched armies. Let's get into the battle once again. This is going to be a bloody and brutal battle. No elephants in this battle, of course, unlike last time. Uh, but yeah, very cool indeed. Uh, of course, um, so the uh, replay, yeah, that is the general over there, as we can see, the boyars, rather than the Drusina, like I said. So it's from uh, Box perspective, because uh, he sent me the replay. Um, so uh, it won't show me where I was moving my troops, but that's fine. I can see where he moved his, <laughs> so that's great. And as we can see, our longbowmen already piling on the pressure onto those Slavic skirmishers. But as you can see, those uh, volleys are not doing much damage. The armor of the Russian armored archers and their shields that they are uh, hauling above their heads is really blocking uh, the arrows. So we really need to get the archers on the flanks, and whether we can do that today is another question. But we are going to retreat our armoured archers, as our lack of cavalry in this battle is going to pose a little bit of a threat uh, to us round our flanks here. And I really don't want to get my noble swordsman into a fight with his cavalry, but that might have to be necessary at some point here today, as he is marching forward to try and take on my forces. Look at that. That is a beautiful shot. And we're going to do another screenshot there. I'm sorry I keep bashing the screenshots in these videos. But I want to get a good thumbnail, guys. <laughs> and you can be the judge of whether the thumbnail was good or not. Because obviously, at this point, I haven't made it yet. So it might be good. It might not be. As we're going to charge our British spearmen forward. Now, this might not have been the greatest of options. Because spearmen versus axes is never going to go well. Uh, especially on the charge, we should have probably sat, sat back and defended rather than charging in. But it's epic nonetheless. Look at that beautiful battlefield there. Stunning indeed. As we see around this flank, uh, our uh, lancers are getting stuck into the uh, noble, uh, sorry, the Russian armoured, uh, Russian mailed horsemen, should I say. And the noble swordsmen are going to come in and try and take them down as well. As we see also on our left flank, we see a big cavalry battle going on between the lancers 
and the Russian mailed horsemen, as well as the uh, boyars. They're a very strong unit, and we're going to turn our archers to try and fo uh, fight them. But our archers are going to unfortunately get a bit of a charge in the back here, which is not, not ideal, as they all get crushed in that charge. That is a fantastic charge. Very nice to see indeed. Uh, and you can see our heavy axemen are now into the fight, fighting the Driz uh, Drizina. So they're fighting the elite troops as well as he brings some more Russian long axes over to try and get rid of the charge. But you can see our front line once again just crumbling there. The, uh, the British spearmen really not doing anything at all against the enemy. They've crumbled completely. This center has just gone, fully gone. Uh, so that is a big issue again, and uh, it's something that I learned from in the next battle. Do not bring spearmen to hold the front line unless they're, you know, elite guys. Um, that's something we uh, we learned along the way here. But look at this glorious dismounted Drazina fighting our English heavy axemen. What a beautiful sight to see. A bloody sight to see, should I say, as well. As a crow is... Uh, He's kind of circling, ready to uh, feast on the carcasses of the dead, unfortunately. Um, but we have our noble horsemen over here. They're ready to mount a charge against the boyars right at the dying, uh, at the dying day of this uh, battle, if I can speak. And I don't even think that made any sense. But you can see our noble horsemen are very strong, but so are his boyars and his Russian long axes. So we're going to have to get out of that relatively soon. You can see our uh, uh, noble swordsmen actually doing really well, but they're going to take a charge from... Uh, no, that's my lancers charging into his dismounted Drazina, and that is really going to put the uh, pressure on that left flank, although we have kind of uh, no real flanks anymore as the English heavy axemen uh, go berserk, uh, actually, at this stage of the day. They go crazy. Look at them. They're out of control. We couldn't actually control them at this point. Uh, and they had to go and fight. You can see, it really, um, although my front line crumbled completely, it was quite even, really, in the end, uh, considering. Uh, because of our noble swordsmen, our heavy axes, our more elite infantry there, doing a lot more damage than they really should have, uh, seen as the spearmen collapsed. <laughs> Once again, but you can see the balance of power fully in his favor now as my crazy axemen keep on going. I don't know where they're going after and who they want to fight right now, but they'll just fight anyone. Look at them. He's just taken someone down. They've just gone mad. And that's really, even though they got the charge off, the Russian mailed horsemen are not happy about these berserk English axemen. As the rest of uh, my uh, unfortunate noble swordsmen run from the battle with 85 of them in the unit. Shocking cowardly behavior there from our men um but the uh, yeah this crazy axeman unit there's only 18 of them left and they just keep on going look how brutal and crazy they are very very strong unit there go on go on the boys and they are just going to get whittled down by these arrows over here as they try and take out the enemy general at any cost whatsoever look at them go there's none of them left they're just going to keep on going. Six of them. They're just falling. They're pretty much trying to do a Boromir out of Lord of the Rings here. Um, but <laughs> they will carry on going. Look at them just falling. And the final man stuck by an arrow. But yeah, that was a brutal, brutal victory. And a very similar, in fact, in terms of the difference to last time. I only got 700 kills, uh, but he got 1,100. So smashing me there. Really smashing me. And you can see... Our, uh, uh, sorry, if we go across to this side, our spearmen, that was what hampered us. Look at those kills. Literally nothing at all. And you can see the axemen, 133, 195, doing fantastically. And the noble swordsman just fell, um, just ran away too early there, only doing 44 and 55. Uh, our longbowmen as well, 64 is decent, uh, and our cavalry all did relatively decent. His cavalry, however, 109 for that one, 93 for that one. Very, very well, uh, doing very well indeed. And you can see these Russian long axes were fantastic in the center there. 152, 133, 131, 99, doing even better than his uh, Drusina, but maybe fighting slightly easier enemies in the spearmen rather than the axes. But it definitely gave me a lot of lessons here uh, in this battle. 
do not use spearmen as your center line when you're playing an online battle. Definitely doesn't work. Um, so we will learn from that in the next battle, uh, which you will see on the channel at some point as well. So do subscribe, like, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. So I hope you've enjoyed these couple of 1100 AD battles in our 12 Battles of Christmas. I've really enjoyed them myself. A great mod. Check it down in the description down below. While you're there, make sure you subscribe and like that be fantastic thank you very much for watching guys merry christmas if you if you uh, celebrate christmas if not i hope you have a great december thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you all again on the next video